Brothers and sisters, I call this historical, uh, this historic 90th annual conference to order. The year is 1929. A group of Oakland janitors have gathered at their monthly meeting. Tonight, their special guest is District Attorney Earl Warren from Alameda County. At one time, we stopped at a school in West Oakland. The janitress was a lady by the name of Mary Coughlin. And I got to talking to her as I talked to everybody. That's my nature. And uh, she was walking around. She was a very old lady. Of course, I was just a kid, but to me, she was old as the hills and feeble, really. And she had a cane, and she, but she was bright and right on the ball and everything. And we got to talking, and she told me that she'd been janitress there at the school for 35 years and uh, that she had to retire because she couldn't do the work anymore, physically unable to. And I thought, my God almighty. And she said, there's no pension. And I thought, my God almighty. This one, right away, I thought, here's a woman that's put 35 years of her life in serving the schools of the city. And when she's old people, they kick her out and she's not taken care of. And I thought, well, that isn't right. Something ought to be done about this. In 1929, uh, we invited Earl Warren, who was then the district attorney of Alameda County, to be our guest speaker at one of these meetings. And uh, I gave, you know, I got up and explained. We had probably 100, 200 people there, members and their wives. And uh, I gave a few remarks, and then I called upon Mr. Warren. And Mr. Warren got up and graciously uh, accepted the invitation, and, you know, made the remarks. But then he said, I note, noticed, in words of this effect, he said, I noticed that Mr. Schwartz has said that you're trying to get a retirement system for school uh, custodians and employees. And uh, you know, he says, the, uh, the school boards uh, do not have any authority to uh, establish uh, uh, retirement systems under the law. You have to go to the legislature and have the legislature pass an enabling act and they bring the school boards to establish a retirement system. So that was the cue. Then immediately, the next day or that day, we started in. So that was how fast this thing worked. The year is 1973. The delegates have gathered in San Diego. The hot topic, collective bargaining. For years, we've been resistant to the idea. We don't need to be a union. We've been successful legislatively in getting good benefit packages and other rights. But wiser heads prevail, and as always, the key is education. Well, it was, it was a, a very uh, heated conference. Uh, very productive, though, in the final analysis. That was, a, that was a conference that gave us the direction of where we were going with collective bargaining because we all knew that it was coming. We had no choice. And we made changes at that time uh, of moving us into becoming uh, prepared for our future because uh, some people used to go under the philosophy that you spoon-fed the membership. And so some of us felt that that wasn't a proper way to do it. So what we did was we started giving the membership all of the facts and really laying it out on the table for them. So from 73 through the time that we had our unit determination elections, our membership knew exactly what they had to do and why they had to do it if they wished to keep CSEA as their bargaining unit or their bargaining agent because uh, many other unions wanted us and they came after us. However, a 73 started it off. We set out to educate our people on their rights and to understand their contract, but at the same time, we pushed them hard 
to stand up and not let those rights be violated because under SB 160, they were equal with the district in their rights as long as they had a good collective bargaining contract. So I think what we did was move them from, from being in the arena of being uh, with hat in hand to go in and talk to the administration or to go in and bargain for a contract to going in and saying, hey, we have a right to this and this is what we want. The year is 1978. It's been 50 years since the first conference, and we're about to elect our first female president. That was Pat Smith from Compton Community College. This is Pat Smith, State President of the California School Employees Association, and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to talk about an issue that is extremely important to all the members of CSEA and to the entire school system in California. I'm referring to Proposition 9, the June 3rd ballot initiative, which calls for a roughly 50% reduction in state income taxes. And now, I stand before you in 1982, honored to be your association president. My friend and mentor, Dorothy Bjork, will follow in 1984. Dorothy served many years as an area director and a regional representative and many more jobs around here and did see quite a change in the format of the board. Originally, all the regional representatives were the board. And of course, as we grew and you got more and more regional representatives, I think there was something like 30 uh, on the board. And that's rather an unwieldy number to deal with. So Dick, working with us, came up with the plan for area directors. And of course, everybody, the organization was going to be no more. We were taking it all away, and the members weren't having any rights and so forth. And it was quite a heated thing. But uh, of course, the wisdom of it has proven out since. But it, I don't know how many times over the years I've heard that CSA was going down the chute because of changes that we were in. They see whether it's a dues change or any other change, why that's going to be the end of CSA. But I think the figures today speak for the wisdom of most of the decisions and how we've come out. We had a board of directors, and I'll love them forever. How many were there at that time? About 21 or something like that. There was a whole bunch of us. Virtually all of those people were voting for that plan that put in place the absolute member control organization, knowing full well that in large measure, most of them would not be on the board of directors that evolved from it. That is commitment. The year is 1991. Two retiring longtime CSEA activists, Bill Turner and Bill Antonelli, offer a passionate plea to Executive Director Wally Blyce to keep retirees involved in the union they've served so long. With that, we create our retiree unit in 1991. The 1990s are tumultuous years. Every time we turn around, there are assaults on classified employees and public education. But we fight back and defeat all initiatives and other legislative attacks.
The year is 2001. We made history by entering the National House of Labor as an independent charter of the AFL-CIO. Representing you, our members, I became an executive vice president of the AFL-CIO Executive Council. This conference may be almost over, but we're not done making history. Please stand and give a proud welcome as State President Clyde Rivers and some of your brothers and sisters to the AFL CIO President John J. Sweeney to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring to you the President of the AFL CIO and our members' partners of the noble fight for workers, Mr. John Sweeney. It certainly gives me a great pleasure to be able to present this charter and to tell you and this entire convention that we are thrilled to have you on our Executive Council, tr thrilled to have this incredible union in the AFL-CIO. Clyde, I present this to you on behalf of the AFL-CIO. And ladies and gentlemen, this is to a partnership whose time has come. It's our time, all right? A few years before he passed away, we completed an amazing and insightful interview with Brother Bill Swartz. The final question was asked, after being absent from the organization for 60 years, as he enters the CSA headquarters, is he proud of what he sees? As a result of our efforts in 1927, this huge building and all the branches you have and the people working. A lot of pride, Bill. Pardon? Do you feel pride? Oh, I feel pride. I'm ready to break down. While honoring our past, we can't help but shape our future. My name is Vanessa Marcel. The year is 2030. And just like you, I am a classified employee. And in the year 2045, I will become president of this great union.